child. Look at, you see how these men try to do you? You don't know me at all, but you be liking my pictures. You be responding to my messages and my stories. You don't know me at all. What is up my bougie boos? It's your girl Taylor and I'm back with another video. I look a mess right now. Um, yeah, we have a lot to do today. Um, the day's almost over, it's five o'clock. I really had these grand expectations of everything I was gonna do today, but y'all, Aunt Flo came. And she had me on my ass, like she kicked my ass. Like I've never in my life felt menstrual pain like that. Like this is totally TMI, but I was in so much pain, I thought I was gonna vomit. That's way too much information, but I've never. So if any of you guys can leave in the comments any tips that you have, I'm actually drinking some peppermint tea right now because that's what my grandmother told me to do and <laughs> she's 92, so I feel like she knows a thing or two and I'm not gonna lie, it's helped. And I didn't wanna take any pain pills this time, um, but I mean, it literally was the worst pain I've ever felt with my cycle and it was a lot and um, I felt like it was the devil because it's like my friend is having an art show today and he's exhibiting his work and I really wanted to make it and I was looking forward to it for weeks and I said I'm not gonna be able to make it I'm not gonna be able to make it and um, but fortunately for me I did have a dentist appointment today that I had to make um, because I chipped one of my teeth but it's not super noticeable that's probably why you guys haven't noticed it but um, I had to make that appointment and um, I'm glad because it got me out the house. It was very difficult, but I made it. And I, I'm just feeling a lot better like now that I'm like out moving and stuff. So I've already taken a shower this morning, but I'm gonna take another one after I do my makeup. I know I'm doing things backwards, but I really wanna finish my peppermint tea while it's still hot. I don't wanna put it in the microwave. So we're gonna do our makeup first, and then I'm gonna take another shower and um, shave my legs after. I'm gonna have to pause again because I do wanna brush my teeth again as well. So when we get to like the foundation, I'm gonna leave and come back. And y'all, my room is a mess. We don't have to talk about that right now, okay? But if this is your first time coming to my channel, um, thank you for coming. I mean, I'm always happy to have you. You know what I always say, grab yourself a plate. Make yourself comfortable. Um, I'm wearing an orange dress today by JLux label. So I've wanted to do like an orange eyeshadow and normally I don't really like to wear the same color, but you know, I was just kind of feeling that for today. But I don't think, I don't think that I have the type of orange I want and now I realize that's a freaking lie because I have this right here that I've never used in my life. So we're gonna, we're gonna experiment in color today and let's see what that gives. Um, but yeah, um, I've never done anything like this. I'm not really good at the whole get ready with me's. No, that's a lie. I, not me lying up into people's face. I definitely have tried to do something like this before. It wasn't very successful. That's why I only did it once. But but yeah, you guys, I wanted to just talk to you guys about my day. So I hope this video isn't too long. Um, and I'm not really good at multitasking. Let me try to find my eyebrow. I'm not super great at multitasking, but... You guys, I wanted to tell you about the day that I've had. Um, yes, I was down bad because of my cycle. Um, and, you know, I kind of got into it a little bit with another real estate agent. And I realized she taught me a very valuable lesson. Long story short, I referred her, uh, her property management company, but she is a real estate agent as well. Let's just name her Sherelle. Um, I referred her as a property manager maybe like two years ago. So fast forward, that client that I helped, um, I helped them purchase that home. We'll name that client Bobby. Bobby wants to sell her house and I reach out, um, she reaches out to me and says she wants to sell her house. I tell her everything about what I would need to do for the house, how it would need to be vacant. The house has tenants and everything because she rented it out when she um, relocated. 
And that's how Sherelle comes into the story. I referred Sherelle's property management company to her because I work with tenants, but I don't manage property. So long story and behold, um, a lot of stuff goes down in that neighborhood. The prices are just not doing what they're supposed to do. And my client does not seem super enthusiastic about, you know, listing it for the price that I told her it would take to, to move it. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when her neighbor who had a bigger home than her listed their price, their house for like $40,000 than what she wanted to list her house at. And um, almost $30,000 less than the price that I, uh, no, maybe like 25, 20, $25,000 less than the price that I had initially suggested to her. Cause she said she didn't want to sell. Um, but after a few weeks went by, I saw that that house and another house were under contract. So I thought, you know, I'm going to reach back out to her and tell her like, Hey, here's a silver lining. Maybe when they sell, we can list because we would be at the thick of the market. We can list. And you know, yeah, you're still having the issues with your tenants and stuff, but I'm going to talk to them and see um, what their plans are. Uh, I'm going to see what their plans are and you know, see if I can maybe help them find another place to live. If they are open to it. She tells me that Sherelle, who I referred to her for just strictly property management, um, is going to be listing the house. She said she, that Sherelle knows the tenants. It's just a lot easier that I shouldn't take things personal, but she's going to list with Sherelle. When I tell you I was livid and I said, I said, why are you doing this? Like we literally, you said you didn't want to sell now all of a sudden. And I got immediately angry at both my ex client for not discussing it with me, not seeing my value, not even thinking anything of me at all to at least say, Hey, I'm working with somebody else. And then I was very upset with Sherelle because I thought she was overextending herself. Like, I know that if a situation like that had happened, I would have called the person, you know, the agent and been like, especially, you know, there's not many of a skin folk here in Austin. I would have called her and said, hey, did you know that Bobby wants to list her house with me? Have you spoke to her? That didn't happen. Fast forward, like I said, Bobby didn't tell me anything you know and i guess bobby didn't tell her anything either sherelle didn't even remember how she got referred to me in the first place how she got referred to bobby in the first place but we'll, we'll cross that bridge later um what do i want to do i'm talking so much let me try this eyeshadow first and see what it's giving god dang that's like neon orange but well we're committing to it and there's nothing we can do about it now um oh it's kind of cute it's softening up a little bit um so fast forward i'm at the domain yesterday at the mall and i run into um one of sherelle's agents like i said she's a real estate agent broker she has her own brokerage and um i made the mistake because i have met him before apparently he didn't remember meeting me even though I said I haven't seen you in a very long time, a long pretty early time when I ran into him, I, I flagged him down because I recognized him. That was a mistake, shouldn't have done that because he ended up really not being that nice. But um, uh, I, told, I told him what happened because he asked me about the market, he asked me about myself uh, because you know I've only met him once briefly. So I understand maybe why he doesn't remember me, but whatever. We had been friends online for a while and we were, you know, he interacted with me and my, my, um, social media. So that was my bad for assuming because he said he didn't know me from a can of paint, even though I would beg to differ. Like I may, I would like me personally, I would never say I didn't know somebody that I followed on social media and interacted with. I would say I know of them. Like I've never met them. I like, I don't know them personally but I do know them. He said he didn't know me at all. He said he called me a stranger. <laughs> Weird, but whatever, that's, that's neither here nor there. So I told him what happened and I said, look, I don't want anything to do with Sherelle. I don't want anything to do with her business. I don't even know, I don't even want anything to do with you because you connected to her. So he goes 
And I said, please don't tell her I said this because I'm not, I'm not going to say anything to her. So, you know, it's, it's pointless. I said, don't even bother. When I tell you that man, as soon as he left, as he probably got in his car and called her immediately because I told him I was going to Trader Joe's after this. By the time I got home from Trader Joe's, I saw that she was on my Facebook liking my picture, Sherelle. And I said, mm-mm, what's that about? And I thought I had blocked her on all social media, but apparently I was wrong. Um, but, <laughs> and I was wrong of me, that was petty. But I thought I had blocked her, so I went immediately and I blocked, I unfriended her, and I went on about my day. Then this morning, I see she calling me, and I said, uh-uh, I didn't answer the phone. And then I said, uh-uh, let me not be petty. Especially because I wasn't feeling well. I was like, oh no, I really don't want to deal with this right now. Um, because I knew he was going to say something. But I was just curious. I thought maybe he wouldn't. I, I was still holding it, you know, giving it the benefit of the doubt that maybe he wouldn't. But when I tell you, the man probably as soon as he got in his car said something. So she called me. I call her back. And she's like, how unprofessional, how disrespectful. And I said, lady, I didn't call you out of your name, but I did make it very clear that I don't want anything to do with you, your business, or anything else. And I said, look, I don't expect any camaraderie in this business, but as two black women, I think that if I were in your position, I would have called you and said, did you know about this? And she said, that's totally how I operate. I didn't know how how um bobby got referred to me i didn't remember this was my business started taking off so much i don't i have systems in place for um for keeping track of referrals but i didn't at the time and she said i apologize for that and she said that when she lists the house she's giving me a referral fee whether i accept it or not she's giving me she's giving me 25 percent. when i told you that humbled the fuck out of me i was so embarrassed because we're trying to live an abundant uh, lifestyle. I was so embarrassed that I didn't give her the benefit of doubt. And worse, I didn't get on the phone and call her. It didn't even occur to me that it was a miscommunication. I automatically assumed the worst of her as I automatically assume the worst of everybody. The moment somebody stabs me in the back, I just think that that's who they are and I let it go. And I was fully prepared to let it go. The problem is I ran into one of her agents and he, he told her and he, and we you know what he told her. He said that she, I was very hostile. He said that, um, I was very uh, upset that I was, um, that he didn't know me at all. Like she specifically said he didn't know me at all. And that, um, that I would come up to a stranger and tell all of my business like that. Child, look at, you see how these men try to do you? You don't know me at all, but you be liking my pictures, you be responding to my messages and my stories. You don't know me at all. I post something, you be like, oh, where's that from? You don't know me at all. So, um, me and the girl smoothed it over. I apologized to her because I said I should have come to you directly. That's my fault for assuming the worst. And she said, you know, in the future, you should always hold people accountable. You don't have to be nasty about it. But if you feel like you've been wrong, there's nothing wrong with just getting on the phone and calling somebody. If I, if they give you their ass to kiss, then you know, you know that it was intentional. But in my situation, this was literally a mistake. And I, that's why I kept reaching out to you to apologize. So I was humbled. And I'm not too wish, you know, big to admit that. I made a lot of mistakes and it just showed I had a lot of growing to do. And you know, I wanted, I talk so much to you guys about having an abundance lifestyle and abundance mentality and that I want whatever God wants me to have and to slam any door, God slam any freaking door in my face if you don't want me to walk through it. And I was not practicing what I preached. And God humbled me. And that was a very valuable lesson that I learned. So after that, I said, she said she's gonna, um, she's gonna get my information. 
She said, even if I don't give her my information, she's giving me a referral. She's sending it to my broker and I'll figure out what to do with it once the check gets there. But she said, that's not my, that's not her money. And she's giving me my, my cut. So I just wanted to say that to you guys. Um, don't cut off your nose to spite your face. Sometimes you so focus on the principle of the matter and stuff and look how I would have missed out a ble on a blessing. Not just the money, because I don't care about the money. That I almost lost a connection with somebody. Um, bad blood, almost had real estate beef with somebody when they didn't even know what they were doing. They didn't even know. That wasn't even their intent. They weren't even trying to hurt me. They. So you know what I did? I went to the store, I bought her some flowers and I bought her a card because I didn't want to do too much. And I wrote in that card and I said, thank you for teaching me a valuable lesson today to not assume the worst in the people. And I really appreciate you reaching out to me to clarify things. And I said, love Taylor, that's all I said. And I asked her if she was in her office and she said that she was and I told her I was gonna drop something off and I went there and she hugged me and she said, thank you so much for doing this. She didn't have to do this. And of course that man was there. And I said, I was snouty with him. I said, excuse me. I said, I would say hello to you, but apparently you don't know who I am. You've never met me before. Oh, because I'm leaving a part out. So after I speak with her, I send him a message and I say, you don't know me at all. Understood. And I sent like a little laughing, crying emoji. And he said, oh, you think meeting somebody on social media means you know them? I never met you. We have met before, but okay. And I said, I knew you were gonna tell um, Sherelle. I knew you were gonna tell Sherelle that it, I wasn't even gone an hour and she was in my Facebook. So that means literally, as, probably as soon as you got in your car, you called her. So when he was there at, at her office, when I went to drop off this stuff, I said, I would say hello to you, but you don't know me. You've never met me before. And I don't care if I ever see that man again. Cause I don't play like that. He didn't have to do that. He could have literally been like, look, I know you asked me not to tell her, but I really think y'all should have talked. I would have respected that. But for him to be like, I don't know you. Basically, I don't owe you any loyalty. I don't know you. That's fine, but I didn't like that. And when I said that, he was like, look, all I said is I think y'all should talk. Nigga, go play, go play in traffic. Like, <laughs> you don't got to worry about me. You don't got to worry about me. You don't know me. You ain't never going to get to know me either. I don't know you either. How about that? Look at me being petty, nasty, nasty. Do as I say, children, don't do as I do because I'm a Virgo and Virgos were dangerous. Like we literally, and when somebody wrongs us, we, it's like they, if somebody crosses us, when we get to that point where we draw a line on you, it's like, we don't even remember you. Like that's how it is. All you gotta do is piss us off one good time. Not one time, but one good time where you really just, you really pissed us off. Baby, we act like we never seen, heard you. We don't even remember your name. Man, when I was in high school, somebody pissed me off so bad that I didn't even remember their name. I, I, it's like they died to me or something. Cause somebody brought them up and I was very close with that person. Somebody brought them up. I didn't even remember who their name. They were like, you don't remember a so-and-so? Y'all were so cool. And I said, I don't know who that is. And they kept trying to convince me. I was like, I do not know who that is. And it literally took me like going to the next periods, literally like hours later. And I was just like, oh my God, they're talking about so-and-so. That's when I realized that I did that. That as, um, that as a Virgo, I literally can just erase people from my memory. Which I don't think is a good thing, but it's, it's a, it's a thing. So I have to be very careful about that. Y'all, I don't think I want to do lashes today. Lashes is too much. It's too hot out here for that. 
I need to take a shower after this and shave my legs. And then we gotta figure out what set we're gonna wear. But we already know what outfit we're gonna wear, so. That's good. But yo, I just needed to tell you that. Yeah, well, that was a lot of information, but I wanted to tell you guys that because I almost blocked a lesson today and I, and I learned a valuable lesson. You know, I don't talk about it a lot, but after my last breakup and how, you know, I felt like I didn't have any support, I feel like I've always been this way where I've always been, thought people were out to get me. And maybe sometimes they are, but the thing about it is you really shouldn't always assume the worst of people. I actually am starting to believe now that most people are generally good and it's a select few people that are bad. I shouldn't assume the worst all the time. Like that's wrong with me. And I shouldn't assume that people don't want to see me succeed, that people want to backstab me and hold me back. Everybody's trying to do the best they can. Even the awful people are still trying to do the best they can. And they just mad because they not it's nothing's good enough, but I'm just saying. Okay. Okay, we're gonna take a little break. Um, but I did want to tell you guys that that um I learned a very valuable lesson today. God humbled me, and I hope that you guys can receive the message in that as well. Like when you have a, in, a confrontation with somebody, do your best to actually confront them in a non-hostile way, like a simple phone call, a simple text, can we speak? I'm proud of myself that I called her back though because I wasn't going to. I was not going to, I was gonna let it go. I was just gonna be mad. And look at me now. I'm going on about my day. My cramps have even gone down. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? So um, if you're going through an issue and you feel like somebody's really wronged you and you're very hurt, because I think I was hurt because like I said, she's another black woman. I was hurt by my client crossing me. And then I was just triggered. So many other things have happened to me this year, real estate wise, where people have let me down, disappointed me, backstabbed me. Like literally, what did the OJ, what did the OJ say? Smiling in your face all the time. They want to take your place, the backstabbers. Okay, like literally, somebody helped me take the knives out my back. Like I do not know how many times I've been stabbed in the back. Like people have hurt me bad. People have crossed me bad. And if I wasn't a stronger woman, I'd probably be out of here because that's how rough it's been um, with certain people. But I need to understand that everything happens for a reason. And that was when I asked God to slam doors in my face that were not for me, those doors were not meant for me to walk through. And I thank God um, that I'm still here to tell the story and that, you know, I look forward to what blessings he's going to bring in the future. So keep that in mind, you guys. When you have an issue with somebody, please do your best to reach out to them or, or at least speak to them. And if they give you their ass to kiss, then you know what their true intentions were. But if they apologize and want to work things out, want to collaborate, want to, you know, they go out of their way to clarify and make things right, forgive them and move on. Because like, when I brought her that stuff, she was grateful. She was like, you didn't have to do this. Thank you so much. And she gave me a tour of her office and we cool now. She even sent me a text thanking me again, saying that that was her favorite flowers. So I say all that to say, we got, we're doing better, okay? When we know better, we're doing better, okay? So that was a 23 minute conversation. So, um, I'm gonna go brush my teeth and probably come back or maybe I'll just fully shower and come back. We'll see what happens. Okay, you guys, y'all yeah, almost forgot about you. Um, so I did actually end up deciding to shave my legs and take a shower and put on some perfume and stuff, but of course I gotta put on more perfume. Um, so now I just put some glue on some eyelashes. I did decide to put on eyelashes, but yeah, that's what, ooh, sorry. Um, that was a yawn. Um, but yeah, that's what we decided to do. And now I'm like so much closer to getting ready. What time is it now? It is 6.10. The event starts at seven and I am like 30 minutes away, but I already knew I wasn't gonna be on time. 
um, because I had a lot of other stuff to do today that I didn't get to do because I wasn't feeling well. And then it got into the real estate beef that is no longer beef anymore. So that's great. But um, yeah, so you guys, I have some cool stuff coming up work-wise that I'm gonna be putting out for you guys. So hopefully when I get the help that I need to really execute that, why is my skin peeling so bad? What's going on here? Look at my skin. What's that? Oh gosh. I hate when I literally have put on my foundation and then I have to exfoliate. I literally did a face mask yesterday. There was no signs of this roughness. Y'all, I'll be back. Even though I just put on foundation, I have to take it off. So annoying. Um, so I actually just ended up taking like a paper towel and kind of like dry brushing it with my paper towel. So, um, and I put a little moisture on it and I'll just put more foundation on there. Right now we're going to try to put on these lashes and everybody knows lashes are, can be kind of difficult. So we're going to see what we're going to do. Okay. That's not awful. Oh God. Literally I was just like, oh, it's not awful. And then it got awful. Oh, okay. I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to add more glue to this. I used to have like these glue kind of liner things that were so convenient and I have no idea where they went. I've lost two of them. Like they had a little like brush on them and they literally looked like eyeliner, but they were, it was lash glue. I don't know if this is gonna stay on. Oh. All I can do is maybe add a little loop of glue in the areas that I'm unsure about and see what happens. Okay, you guys, it doesn't look perfect, but it's not awful and it's nighttime. So, you know, we doing what we can do and I'll bring some glue with me just in case. So. Let me finish putting on this foundation. But yeah. So we're going to my friend's art show. I need his help with something actually and I'm nervous to ask him for help. Cause I'm just not good at asking people for help. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm gonna try to see if I, maybe I can like take him out to lunch or something. To butter him up and ask him for help. But y'all know I don't like asking people for help, especially men. But yeah, what are you all getting into? This week has like been kind of rough, so I'm kind of like happy for the weekend a little bit. And um, I gotta I have an appointment tomorrow, a secret appointment that I will not be telling y'all about. Y'all will be finding out sooner or later what I'm working on. But be on the lookout, got some surprises coming your way. Uh, but yeah, and so I'm not going to bore you guys anymore because I told, I've been talking for a long, periodically long time. Okay. And I'm just now putting on my freaking blush as bronzer. Mm, get it together. Okay. This is what. I want to put on, but it, yeah, let me focus. I told y'all I wasn't that great at multitasking. I'd be thinking I can get it together. And we, we see I got some work to do. So I'll call you back. Okay guys, can you guys see me? Let me come in the light. Why does that still look dark? Let me turn up the lights a little bit. Okay, yeah, this is my final look. I, I like it, I feel like I don't look yellow. The lashes are a little bit interesting, but we're not focusing on that right now. If you find enough flow, you're too close, you're too close. We got some blush going on, we got some liner. Some of my favorite lip gloss is the NYX Filler Instincts. And I'm putting, I actually mixed these together by accident. I thought I was putting on the gold one and I put on the pink one, but um, the pink one's my favorite, but I wanted to wear like the bronzy kind of goldish one today called um, Brunch Drunk. 
Then I have some orange eyeshadow, did my brows, some highlighter. Yeah, that's what we get into. And y'all, I found one of the lash glues unopened, so that's good. But yeah, I'm gonna put on my dress. And I did wanna show you what fragrance I'm wearing. I'm wearing this new fragrance that I got called Tender Light by Estee Lauder. I actually really like it, it's soft. It's kind of citrusy or like some kind of floral something. I don't know, it's it's very interesting. I'm not, I've never really checked for Estee Lauder fragrances like that. This was in my fragrance haul. Um, ooh, yeah, I gotta go. But yeah, um, it's nice. Um, but another fragrance I'm absolutely obsessed with, I actually might mix with this one, is, um, let me find it. Cause I have all my fragrances, my new fragrances right here. It's called Magnificently Dubai. Ooh, it's called Magnificently Dubai by Zara. It's so good. It's like very saffron smelling and it's very interesting. I'm gonna show you guys the bottle. I got the small one. This is what the bottle looks like. And it's one of the Joe Malone scents. Like the Joe Malone emotion scents. No, not emotion. This one is the city. So magnificently Dubai. Definitely go check it out. It literally gets better with time. So it's so good. It's very strong though. But I told you I like those kind of slappy in your face kind of scents. And I'll most likely be wearing these earrings. Not me showing y'all my nostril hair. These earrings from Fashion Nova. They look like this. They're textured. Just some kind of like they look like hoops to the naked eye, but they're actually like this. They're very light, like them a lot. So I'll probably be wearing that. But yeah, let me put on my clothes and I will show you the finished look. I gotta brush down these edges cause I may not do edge control and all that kind of stuff, but I at least try to brush them down or moisturize. They are looking so dry. You guys, another thing I wanted to show you really quickly, if you are a thickums like me, you know, a big booty Judy, your thighs probably rub together. This is a godsend. It's called Body Glide. Um, it's what it says the original anti chafe balm. It's what the runners use when they're running. So you can probably get this at a Champs. That's where I originally found it, like a sneaker store, athletic type store, Dick's, Sporting Goods, something like that. But um, they have different sizes. I actually got the small size at Target in the running section of the exercise section. So. Y'all, this really works. And I've been using it for years now, at least five or six years. They have a blue one, they have a pink one for women. I haven't really noticed any difference between them, but I did have a big one and I like the small ones to put in my purse for when I go to events in case I need to reapply. So yeah, just wanted to show you that in case it could help somebody because I absolutely love that. That's like one of my staple products. Will not ever live without that, <laughs> ever. Okay, you guys, it just occurred to me that, again, the lens on this is, like, so zoomed in. I really need a better lens for um, this camera, but I did want to show you the outfit. So, again, my shoes are from Zara. Or maybe not again if I didn't tell you that. The dress itself is from J Lux label. Super cute. And it's also backless. Sorry, the sun is doing a lot. Let me move in closer. Yeah. And I'm wearing a vintage bracelet from my grandmother and these earrings from Fashion Nova. And I'm wearing that Magnificently Dubai fragrance mixed with that Tender Light fragrance from Estee Lauder. So yeah, that's the fit. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to get some footage at the actual event, but if not, Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Let me know if you like these kind of style videos. Okay, you guys, we have not been out in a periodically long time. <laughs> so we are finally going out tonight. Um, I'm wearing this dress from J Lux label. It is backless, really cute. Some heels from Zara, some jewelry from Fashion Nova and this is vintage from my grandmother, so. Yeah, we're feeling a lot better today. Auntie Flo tried to take us out today, but that's okay. We're still cute. And yeah, happy to be going outside. So, but my whole thing about this show, right? I want everybody to take away uh, growth, right? Inspiration, 
uh, CDs. I encourage you to read the captions uh, for my pieces, not only look at the pictures, but um, actually check out what I'm in, right? Um, be curious. And if it seems confusing, explore that a little bit, right? Because um, art is about being curious. It's about asking questions. And that's my gift to you. Yeah.